Okay, we were talking about false consciousness in the last video. <coughs> um, and I just wanted, and, and its relationship between wokeism and uh, systemic oppression. And it's just something worth mentioning. We'll come back to this when we talk about uh, critical race theory and critical theory. But what we mean by the term systemic, if you ever think about that, what is meant by the term systemic racism or, or institutional sexism or institutional racism or institutional oppression in general, institutional oppression, institutional sexism, uh, or excuse me, institutional systemic uh, oppression. What, what is meant by that and what's the evidence for that? It's interesting to think about what's the evidence for that. So if someone were to ask you, well, if there's systemic racism or if I were to ask you, is, what's, is systemic racism or systemic sexism real? Um, and you would say yes, and I would say, well, what's the evidence for that? What the evidence for it is, according to what later comes out of Marxism, namely critical theory, is very simply uh, the disparities or inequalities in outcomes. What does that mean? Well, we have to understand the distinction between equality of opportunity and equality of outcome. Equality of opportunity and equality of outcome. Equality of opportunity is simply that everyone has the same opportunity or there, there is equality in opportunity. So there is no law preventing, for example, uh, minorities or non-whites or women, etc., cetera, uh, from doing this or that thing. So for example, um, there is a disparity in outcomes uh, when it comes to women in STEM fields, in science, technology, uh, engineering, uh, mathematics, I think that's what STEM stands for, I forget. Um, but there, there's a big disparity and a huge gap between <coughs> uh, women and men when it comes to this. Women are underrepresented in STEM fields. Um, to a critical theorist, that would be, if you see you know, 90% or whatever it is, let's say it's 80%, 90% of, of uh, jobs in STEM are men, 10, 20% are women, that's evidence for a kind of systemic sexism. Or philosophy, for example, take philosophy, my own uh, profession it's pretty much 70% men, 30% women when it comes to PhD holders in the field. Now, is that evidence for uh, systemic sexism, systemic racism? I think a critical theorist would say yes. Now, the question is, is a disparity in an outcome that is a difference in an outcome, an inequality in an outcome? Um, and by the way, uh, the question is, is that evidence for a disparity in treatment? Okay, so we were saying equality of opportunity, equality of outcome. Equality of opportunity means everybody has the same opportunities. The people who advocate for equality of outcome, the idea that we don't really have equality of opportunity until we have equality of outcome, that would be very Marxist and critical theorist. What, what does that mean? Well, we can say that, again, we'll take the example of w women engineers. Um, we have 90 or 80, 20 men to women. Again, I don't know the exact statistics, it's just an example. We really, we can see from that disparity Assuming that if there was, if there were pure equality of opportunity, we would have no equality of outcome. So we aim for the equality of outcome to ensure the equality of opportunity. Now these two ideas are very different, but it's very important that you understand the distinction. Equality of opportunity is simply that everyone has equal opportunity. There is nothing holding anyone back. Um, quality of outcome says we don't really have equality of opportunity until we have no disparities in anything. Now this can go too far. For example, um, you know, I, I, I was recently. I, somebody say this, um, uh, men are overrepresented in um, incarceration. 90% of the people in jail or in prison are men. Uh, would we advocate for equality of opportunity, or excuse me, equality of outcome there? We see a disparity, 90% are men, 10% are women. Should we, we, we try to equalize that so we have 50-50? Well, I don't know, I, I don't think so. Um, so the question is, does equality, uh, disparity or inequality in outcome ipso facto or necessarily mean a disparity or an inequality in opportunity? That's the question. I think whether you say yes or no to that depends on how much you like Marxism. It seems to me this case. So I'm trying to be, to sort of fly above this and say, you know, what can we say about Marxism and help you decide whether you want to be a Marxist or not? I'm not a Marxist, um, but it's largely not, not necessarily, or, or excuse me, it's, it has more to do with simply this idea, but I don't think that any disparity in an outcome necessarily means a disparity in uh, treatment or an opportunity. Now, sometimes it might, but every time, I don't know. Anyway, back to the idea of false consciousness and systemic oppression. <sighs> false consciousness would be the idea that these that oppression, oppressive forms or oppression in society, victimization in society, racism, sexism, etc., classism, these are hidden. And uh, false consciousness is that which sort of buys into the narrative that everything is okay, everybody's equal, uh, there's equality of opportunity. Um, and you could see the response to that would be, no, 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 wait a minute, we need to look at disparities in outcomes so we could find the hidden institutional or systemic oppression. Okay? Hope that was clear.